We're here with another video tutorial and uh, in this one we're going to be making some add-ons to the social networking plugin. For uh, those that own it, uh, you'll probably know, uh, just a few days ago we released new versions of the iOS and Android versions that uh, basically uh, take the whole Facebook API and make it so that you can use the exact same code on iOS and Android if you own both versions of the plugin. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to work with the graph API a little bit here, and uh, you know this this video basically you should have understood all of our previous videos because uh, we're going to be taking that information that we learned previously and building on it and making a real world usable example here. So we're going to start out and just uh, have a look at um, you know graph you know basic graph re API requests. So. One of the most common things people want is to be able to get the user's name or information about the user. So that's the me graph request. And uh, what the plugin does is it returns a hash table. And uh, that hash table uh, is basically uh, directly from the Facebook API. They return JSON. We take the JSON, turn it into a hash table for you. And uh, you know that's all good and well, but sometimes uh, you know if you're doing a lot of graph API calls, you're going to want to. Uh, you know, instead of having to dig into hash tables and array lists, you'll want to have everything strongly typed. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on it and make everything strongly typed for a couple of the graph API calls so that you can see how to do this for Facebook. And you know, basically you can take this for any API that you ever have to uh, consume and strongly type it really easily with some of the stuff we include with the plugin. So you'll see it has a whole bunch of parameters in here and this is just uh, key values last name, username, verified, and whatnot. So uh, just as an example, we'll take a few of those and rather than doing all of them, and uh, we'll strongly type them. And we're gonna do the same thing for, for uh, the friends list. So this is a little bit different because it's actually an array list of friends. So it's a whole bunch of data. So what we're gonna do is uh, show how to handle a single class and also an array of classes. And uh, on top of all that, we're gonna do this in a DLL. So uh, it's going to be a whole bunch of good and goodies coming in here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a look at what this uh, demo scene has set up. So right now uh, it just has a completion handler, and this is the one that's included with the plugin that just uses the result logger class, which is just a handy class that will allow you to dump an object that's either a hash table or an array list to the log, and it'll uh, it'll pretty print it like you just saw. In the start method, you know this is just um, for demonstration purposes. I stuck a, a valid access token in here, and this allows you to uh, test all your graph API calls right in the Unity editor. So you can just fetch your access token, hard code it in here, and do all your testing. Just make sure you delete that before releasing. And in our uh, our own GUI, we just have those four buttons, and uh, they're they're pretty basic at this point. So this one we're we're not going to be concerned with for the moment because it's empty. It's uh, this is just uh, calling the graph request and and passing in that completion handler, so it dumps it to the log, and same thing with the uh, the log get friends, and uh, we'll tap on those other two methods in a minute. So I am going to kill mono develop now, and relaunch it so that we can create our DLL. And uh, you know this is a uh, you know it's something that we get asked about often is how do you create DLLs and uh, why would you want to? And one of the reasons is if you have a whole bunch of, uh, of code that's shared between projects, if you keep it in a DLL, then you only have one place to update your files. You know, Unity doesn't let you add file references, so uh, it's DLLs are really the only clean way to do it. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and dump this on the desktop for now. We'll call it Facebook Helper. And you can see we're creating a library project. And we are up and running. So it's going to give you this my class and you don't really need that. You can get rid of that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a reference. So we're going to be using some of the stuff that's included with the social networking plugin. And because of that, we need to reference it in here so that we can get at it. So I have that. What we're going to do here is just navigate to your, uh, your project folder. And in the Assets Plugins Prime 31 folder, we have the P31 ResKit DLL. And this has some features that we're going to take advantage of. So we're going to add that as a reference. So uh, we'll make uh, just two files straight off. The first one is going to be, and we're going to use the empty class template. Uh, we're going to, remember, we're going to, we're going to grab Facebook friends and the Facebook user. So just to be clear, we'll call it Facebook user for one of these. 
and we will call the other one Facebook friend. Okay, so we don't need constructors for these and we can get rid of the constructors. What we do need is a reference to that Prime31 DLL. And make sure when you add your references that you actually do add them. You can see that uh, when I typed in Prime31, it didn't auto-complete for me. And that's because it did not add. If you double click it, it will add. So now, it will actually work and see how it auto completes there. Okay, so there's going to be a couple things we're going to use from the Prime 31 DLL. Uh, let's just jump back here and we're going to look at the log of friends again. So we're going to log get friends and we can see it includes uh, an ID and name. So two attributes. That's all they're giving us with that. So that's that's simple. We'll just say public string ID, public string, and username. Okay, so that's all good and well. This is what our class is gonna look like. So what we want is we want the, the P31 RESTKit DLL to autofill these for us, rather than us having to deal with all that. So it includes uh, an attribute, and we haven't gone over attributes, and this tutorial isn't gonna be specifically about attributes. We're just gonna see how to use them. So you'll see there's this P31 deserializable field attribute. And if we add this, we'll see that we actually have three variations on it. One of them takes a key, one of them takes a key and a type, and one of them takes a key, a type, and a boolean is collection. So for this one, we're just going to go ahead and put in the key ID, and I'll explain what that does now. So uh, basically, what this is going to do is it's going to grab uh, any information in the hash table. So if you remember, we have ID and name. And it's, it's going to map whatever is in that ID value to whatever parameter is the next one in your uh, in next line of code. So it's basically what the attribute is sitting on top of. So this one, and I, see I purposely named it username on this so you can see, the actual field is name. And you can see that you can actually have your, your actual fields in the in your class name anything you want. This is, is the important piece. This has to match what the hash table has and what the API is returning. So right there, that's all we need. This Facebook friend class is done. Uh, so you might wanna, you know, we're not gonna go deep into attributes, but uh, I'll show you real quick with what we have available with this uh, deserializable field attribute. So if we, uh, we jump over here, we can see the, the definition for it is right here. And this is just a you know real basic attribute. It has uh, you can see it's you extend the system attribute class, and you can define where this attribute is legal. You know, for instance, uh, it could be something that you put on fields. It could be something on properties. It could be something on classes. In our particular case, we want it on a field because we're going to apply it to the fields of our class. And it just has three parameters. It has the key, the boolean for is collection, and the type. And you can see it's a real simple class. We give it three constructors. That way, uh, it's it's uh, we're able to set everything in the constructor. And that's all there is to that that particular class. So we'll see how that's actually used later on. But let's fill in our Facebook user. And I'm just going to grab a couple out of here to, in the interest of speed that I already have. And we'll dump these in. And we're going to do a new one here. So uh, by default, the deserializable field will work with strings. So let's say you have something that is a Boolean, for instance, or any other type. What you can do, now the verified field in, uh, in this particular method returns a Boolean. So we can pass in a type as the second parameter. And what that will do is allow us to have a bool here as our actual field. And the deserializable attribute uh, field will actually just go through and it will cast all of these and convert them to the proper uh, type in there. So that's it. That's all we have in our DLL here. We're going to build it and we have no error, so all is well. So let's dive in here and we're going to grab the DLL we just made. So it'll be in your project folder and the bin folder. You'll either have debug or release and you'll see right there is the Facebook helper DLL.
So that's it for our DLL. So we're gonna close down mono develop and we're just gonna drag and drop this into the plugins folder. Okay, so here we are. Now we can open up mono develop again, this time in our Unity project. And we can fill in those missing methods. So again, this is the graph request and this is uh, the me request. So what this does is it's gonna return that hash table and we'll look at it one more time. So we're gonna log it and we get this hash table with all these uh, various values. And you can see some of the ones that we, we grabbed. You know, here's verified. And if you scroll down a little bit, uh, we can see uh, the rest of them are in there. So now, how do we turn this hash table into our class? So the first thing we need to do is add a using declaration. So our, uh, our files were in the Facebook helper namespace. So Mono Develop automatically takes the name of the project and puts your code in that namespace. So we're gonna go ahead and just add that so we have access to our classes. So now we're gonna grab that actual user by just using uh, an extension method. And it's the two class extension method. And we auto-complete and you can see we have our Facebook user in here. So just to confirm that this is actually working, first let's put an equal sign in there. We're gonna debug log this and just say uh, username. Okay, so that's it. So with, with this one line, basically the, the P31 deserializable attribute takes over along with this two class extension method and it will convert this ugly hash table into your strongly typed object. So let's see if this actually works here. So we're gonna jump in and do a log and look at that username, Prime31, just as we expect. All right, so now let's uh, do the same thing down here. So this, this one's a, you know, a tiny bit uh, uglier because we have to get to the data and Facebook, for some reason, returns a hash table. And then inside that hash table, they return a data parameter that's the actual array list. So we are going to go ahead and grab that array list and now remember, we want to strongly type this, and we want to strongly type the entire array list so that we have uh, our friends all in a usable format. So what we can do is use another one of the extension methods that's included with the P31 ResKit DLL. We have the to list, and this takes in a class as well. And we can take in fast Facebook friend, and now we have a strongly typed list of friends. So we're gonna go ahead and just dump the first one. And you can see we get autocomplete for it as well, as you'd expect, username and ID. So we'll dump the ID to the console. And when we run this, we get friends and that converts it into a strongly typed list and there's the ID. All right, so that's the basics of it. So I'm just gonna do a real quick, show you some of those methods we used here. Now, I'm not gonna dive into the details because uh, these extension methods are using uh, generics and they're also using a lot of reflection. And this is reflection that will work on iOS and Android with the AOT module, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, you know, these are, we'll get into reflection in a future tutorial if, uh, if enough people wanna hear more info about it as well as uh, generics and your definition. So these are the methods we used. We had the to class method, which just takes in the class name. And uh, you know, if you remember our syntax for extension methods, uh, you have the, the this keyword and then the type. So this works on hash tables. And this one, the list one, works on an array list. And this, this one's nice and simple. We can actually look at this. So it just creates a new list and it's a list of hash tables. So it just goes through and it will add using the hash table extension method to class. So if we, uh, if we look at this one, this is a little hairy. We're not gonna go into much detail here but um, this to class method is a, essentially uh, grabbing all of the, you, know, you can see we're grabbing all the custom attributes and uh, you know, of the P31 deserializable field attribute type. So all those attributes that we, we defined on our class, this just grabs them all, loops through them, and then uh, you know, creates the methods and you know, does some magic that we're really not too interested to in this one. And that's about it. So now, 
armed with this information, if you're using the Graph API extensively, you should be able to dive in there, make your own strongly typed classes, and uh, not have to deal with the hash tables and array lists anymore. Thanks for watching.